Hi, I'm going to explain how to use Elicit to extract data from your own PDFs today. You can see some of my team members working in the background, working hard to shift some features this week. Uh, anyways, so in an earlier video, I walked through the Find Papers workflow, which helps you find uh, search over our database of public papers, find papers that might be relevant to you. Today, I'm going to go through a workflow where uh, that you would use if you already have a bunch of papers. So this might be the case if you're working on a systematic review and you've collected papers from a bunch of different databases and now you want to screen them or you want to extract some data from them. Uh, it could also be the case if you just have a ton of papers in your reference manager uh, like Zotero and you want to find the papers that might be most relevant for a specific research project just kind of want to organize them or get a better sense of what they're actually about in this case if you, so if you have a bunch of papers already that you found from whatever have whatever sources uh, you can use elicit to understand more about what they've done and uh, prioritize them in, in a way that makes sense to you uh, so in this case i'm going to select this workflow extract data from pdfs we're currently working on building a zotero integration that should be out hopefully very soon and over time we'll um, expand other ways to let you import your papers and connect your papers to elicit beyond just through pdfs so it's pretty straightforward if you click on that uh, uh, upload button you can open this file picker um, in this case i have a folder with a bunch of pdfs and you know you can click one you can select multiple i'm just doing this by holding the shift button down on my keyboard you can do command or control a to select all of them in this case i have about 100 pdfs uh, and if i click them you can see what all the different PDFs that have been selected here, and then I can click Upload. And this will start to upload a bunch of different PDFs. In some cases, we won't be able to uh, parse the PDF, so you might see a result like this, like no title found. We're definitely working on making that better. Uh, but otherwise, we will, we will you know, start to pull the PDFs in, as well as any information we can find about them. Um, the file size is limited to about 20 megabytes per paper, so keep that in mind. Um, no uploading giant, giant books. We can see it's like a much more efficient way to start working. And then uh, from here, you can select the papers that you want to uh, to study in this case. Everything that you upload will get stored in your library as well. You can see it all got added here. And you can upload papers from your library too, if you just kind of want to keep them. Uh, to use across multiple sessions. When you upload a paper, it's not going to be visible to anyone except for you. It's only uh, tied to your account. It doesn't. It's not a way of publishing your paper, um, so don't use it for that purpose. No one else is going to see it except for you. And so, over time, if you oh, if you also upload a paper into your library, you'll be able to pick it from ex from this extract workflow as well. So let's just pick a couple of these workflows to start. Um, I will just pick a few of these and then we can see what we can do with the listen. Great. So I've selected them. Here they are. They've been parsed. Uh, and then the next thing I will do is add columns. This is how you extract the data from them. So just like in the find papers workflow, there are a bunch of predefined columns here. Again, many are skew kind of towards the biomedical field because that's where, you know, it's one of the largest research domains. It's where we have a lot of the users, but you can easily create custom columns to extract data from from them as well. So uh, let's say in this case, I can just add information like, you know, region or funding source. And I will get that information automatically from the different papers. If I click on the information, I'll see where in the paper we got this information. You can see where in the information uh, paper we got this information from here. As a quick preview, you can scroll through some of the relevant quotes. This just makes it really easy for you to confirm that illicit uh, isn't hallucinating this answer from the paper. It makes it easy for you to check this answer as well as get a little bit more context around the answer. And you can always open the paper and see where exactly this information is coming from. Again, if you click into it, it will open the paper directly and elicit so that you can kind of skip through it as well. So this is how you can uh, really automate the process of extracting data from, from papers. I think right now it's you know, you could hire, you might hire teams of research assistants to do this manually in a very complicated spreadsheet. Um, ideally, you would, you know, you could let Alyssa take the first pass and then check its work, customize and, and evaluate that way. If you're an Alyssa Plus subscriber, you can also enable high accuracy mode. Uh, this will apply techniques that are, that will generally get you more accurate and more complete answers. It is also more expensive though, so keep that in mind as you use them. 
Um, but yeah, if you are, if you are doing something like a systematic review where accuracy is really important, this is usually a better technique. For all these columns, you can kind of edit uh, the prompt that we use to extract this data. So you can edit the description, you can edit the instructions. A lot of times instructions are good if you want a specific format, like you want number in a particular way. Um, generally think about this as if you were giving instructions to an actual research assistant and providing more context or color on what it is that you're looking for. Let's try a custom column next to see how this, you know, you can ask questions that are not just the predefined ones here. Let me think about what would be interesting. Um, okay, let me just try something. Okay, great. So we tried a couple of premium columns. Now you can see I'm getting an answer back for this paper and there's a little flag here. So we will show this when we're not entirely confident in the answer. And so we want to flag places where you might want to double check and maybe go through the paper to look through the information a little bit more. That's a way for us to try and give you more answers rather than just giving you a bunch of blanks, but also flag places that might need more careful review. And then you can see this, I just created this column. I don't know if it's really the best one, but it's pretty easy to create columns. So if you're in a different domain and you want to ask questions that don't, that are not uh, mentioned here, then you can very easily just type it in and provide some more context, description instructions to um, get the results that you're looking for. And again, if you're already delegating this to research assistants, just think about using the instructions that you're giving them. When you're done, you can export all of your results to a CSV. Again, if you're a Plus subscriber and share them with other people and all of your work will be saved here. So you can always come back and continue working from where you left off.